Hello and welcome into my attic. In this video I'll be making over three thrifted items. So for my first DIY I'm going to decorate this simple little cutting board and it's the very first time I've ever decorated a cutting board so I have chosen two different ways of decorating it because I don't know which one is going to come out the best so on one side I'm going to try the image transfer method and on the flip side I'm simply going to mod podge on an image that I printed off from my inkjet printer so the first method I'm going to be trying is the simplest method, which is gluing on my printed image. Now this is a beautiful French country image that I downloaded free from the Graphics Fairy. So obviously I just printed this out on normal photocopy paper, there's nothing special about the paper or anything else, it's just a gorgeous print so you know it should come out nice. Um, so it's almost the perfect size already but I'm just going to cut off the excess paper which is these two corners up here which I don't need at all. I'm going to glue it on with a mixture of wood glue and water, not too runny, not too thick, just you know a nice smooth consistency uh, but obviously you can use anything you want, you can use Mod Podge or anything else. So I'm going to put it on as straight as I possibly can and then I'm just going to give it the cellophane touch, you know, to smooth out all the wrinkles. I'm going to be sanding down the paper edges. So that means it has to be completely dry, so I'm going to leave it drying overnight. So because this is a French country style, I thought some rusty embellishments would suit it really well. So I've got out some embellishments, which I'm going to give um, a rusty makeover. I don't know if I'll use all of them, but you know, I'll choose which ones I want to use when it's near the time. So to give my embellishments a rusty makeover, I'm going to stick down some double-sided sticky tape stick them on the top so that they don't move and then I can paint them more easily and I've made this brown dark brown um, acrylic paint mixture with bicarbonate soda or baking soda a little bit of cornstarch a little bit of wood glue to stick it all together and a little bit of water to get a, a gritty but creamy consistency and that is the perfect base for a rusty look. So now my paint is dry, I'm just going to dry brush over it with orange acrylic paint and then it's ready to stick onto my cutting board. So now it's the next day and the image on my cutting board is completely dry. So I'm just going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and sand off all the excess paper around the edges of the cutting board. Before I decorate the cutting board, I'm going to lay the base on the flip side for the second method of decorating the cutting board. As you'll notice, I'm using the exact same image on this side as well. Um, I printed it out as a mirror image so that when I lay it face down, the text will be the correct way around. Also, you'll notice I've already painted the cutting board white and that is to give the image a nice even background to sit on rather than a stained wooden background that's all different colors and shades. So, um, I thought the white would be the best to go with. What I'm using to transfer the image onto the cutting board is a matte medium. This matte medium here uh, is really a sealer for when you finish your projects um, and you put on your last uh, coat of sealer to protect it. And it's a really good uh, product for transferring images as well. 
So there are various products you can use to transfer images. Matte mediums are one of them, any matte medium, and Mod Podge as well you can use. And there are, of course, there are products that are specially made to transfer images as well. I'm using cellophane to press down well so I can avoid getting uh, sticky fingers because this product's a little bit sticky and also of course to iron out all the wrinkles. I'm going to let it all stand for about five minutes. Now before I pull it up I'm going to put some matte medium on top as well because if this product dries onto the cutting board when I pull it off it's going to um, all the paper is going to remain on the cutting board and I need the paper to come all the way off so I'm going to wet it here on top with the uh, matte medium again and then I'm going to pull it off so it's a bit more safer that way here goes nothing hmm kind of interesting um, yeah okay it didn't come out that great, so too many white spots. Maybe beige would have been better rather than white uh, for a background. It would have mingled in a bit better. Uh, the colours are very garish or whatever you call it. <laughs> you know, a little bit colourful, bright, and you can't really make out the details very much. Hmm, don't know about this. Let's carry on. So now I'm going to finish off the other side, which seems to be winning the race here. Um, yeah, I'm going to put on some clear wax and then some antiquing wax. Yeah, I, I like this. I'm so far so good with this side. Now I'm going to turn it over and put some dark wax on the other side to cover up all those white spots. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, this doesn't seem to be working. I should have put on some clear wax first like I did on the other side, but no, I'm... Um, this, this is a fail, this is a total fail, so I'm going to stick with the other side. So on the top here, on the handle, I was going to put twine, which is great, you know, it's perfect for cutting board. But I thought I'd do something different and I'm going to um, hot glue on this old plastic belt. Okay, so I've decided not to use this piece here. I prefer it plain without anything at all. Um, but I will add some studs that I painted previously. I'll put a couple on the belt where the holes are. And I'll put a couple on the actual cutting board as well. So adding some twine now at the top to hang it up, just making a knot and threading it through. And, you know, I really like the outcome of this cutting board because I do really like the plain cutting boards as well. But I wanted at least one cutting board amongst lots of other cutting boards that has got a, a, an image on it. I think at least one looks quite nice. So here's the reveal, guys.
So for my next makeover, I'm going to um, decorate this jug here. It's just an old terracotta jug and it's very dirty and very smelly. It has a sweet sickly smell, which is probably the wine that they used to keep in here because this kind of a jug here keeps the drinks really cool. I am not going to use it for drinks. I'm just going to use it as decoration and to put maybe flowers in. And I'm going to show you how I got it from this consistency to this consistency. So I want to make this into a rustic country style jug. And the way I've made it at least, the secret of doing that is in the actual paint. Originally, I was just going to paint it a terracotta colour and leave it at that. But then I decided I'd rather have um, a distressed look. So basically what I'm doing here is using two colours, a dark colour for the uh, base coat and a lighter colour for the top coat. Um, obviously you can have any colours you prefer. Um, I started off with the base coat and the base coat needs to be nice and chunky, nice and thick. So I started off with this terracotta colour but you know brown's a good option as well. Yes, so I'm just using cheap acrylic paints here. I used orange and brown because I was trying to make terracotta colour, but just brown would have been su sufficient. Um, I added some cornstarch to thicken up the paint and some wood glue as well, some white glue, just to you know make sure it all binds together and some water to loosen it all up. There are no real measurements, you know, just do it by eye. Just put a couple of spoons in here and there until it's a nice consistency to apply onto your project. If you struggle when applying it, then it's probably too thick. So I applied it with a brush and dabbed it with a pom-pom, but really you, you don't need to use a pom-pom. You can just dab it on with the actual brush. We're just trying to get like texture, as much texture as possible. The more texture you get, the better the result will be at the end. I dried off my first coat with the hairdryer so I could carry on straight away with a second coat. Now I've got my jug all covered, I can go with my second coat and when I've applied the second coat I like to get out my bristly brush and I like to um, go backwards and forwards um, over the wet paint because it pulls up the paint, it, you can see the brush marks, it just gives it a really nice texture. So when I finished the second coat, I went in again with the hair dryer to dry it off. Um, obviously, it's not dry underneath, but it is dry on top to the touch. Uh, so in that way, I can still do a third coat. And like before, I used the bristly brush to give it as much texture as possible. So at this point, I was happy, but I could have been happier. I still wanted more texture. There was still something missing. I tried scratching it with a hair curler, but that didn't work neither. So I took the remainder of my paint and thickened it up again with some cornstarch. And I found that if I layered it on using a flat brush, using flat strokes, I finally got the texture I was looking for. Can you see by skimming over the top like this with a flat brush, it's kind of leaving craters on the surface. And that is exactly what I was looking for. So now I want to add my white paint on top, but I don't want the two colours to mix into each other. I don't want them to mingle. So I'm going to add a sealer and I'm going to do that by using uh, my own sealer, making my own sealer and it's adequate enough just to use some white glue and some cornstarch. So I applied the sealer and I dried it off with the hairdryer. So I prepared my white paint by adding white paint, uh, a little wood glue, a little cornstarch and water just as before. 
So I applied a, um, just one coat of the white paint and I took a nice juicy wet wipe and started wet distressing um, some of the paint off. And here is the end result, a little country style rustic jug. So when I saw this teapot here, uh, immediately Chinese teapot sprung to mind. So I bought it for that reason, because it reminded me of a Chinese teapot. And I saw that it had been on the shelf for a year. And it was three euros originally, but I got it for about 20 cents, uh, because, you know, it had been on the shelf for a long time. And you can just about see the date maybe make it out, maybe not. <laughs> um, and I just bought it because I like the shape. So I began to paint the teapot in gunmetal grey and when it dries, it will dry much darker, it almost looks black. And then I dried it all off with the hairdryer. The uh, paint ingredients um, to make sure that it sticks onto the ceramic was just my normal uh, acrylic paint with uh, some white glue added, you know, wood glue, uh, PVA glue, something like that, and some cornstarch. And you must dry it with the hairdryer as well, because if you don't use the hairdryer, you don't cook it on, it won't stay on as well. It stays on really well when you heat it up with the hairdryer. So I did two coats like that and dabbed it all on with a pom-pom to get a smooth finish. And here I'm just thinking about what do I do next? I've never painted or decorated a Chinese teapot before. I've never done anything Chinese before. I haven't got a clue. So what I did was I tried painting flowers on it and that just didn't turn out very well. <laughs> so here's what I painted and I didn't even film it because I just knew it was going to be horrible. Um, it doesn't look too bad at the beginning, but then when I went in with the um, black pencil to try and add a bit of, I don't know, dimension, I suppose, um, it just looked, it just spoiled everything and looked really horrible. So in the end, I scrapped the whole thing. Um, I just painted all over it black again and started again from scratch with another idea. So here we are once again with the teapot all black. A new palette for a new design. So what I did was I took some spackle, added some black paint to it and shoved it all into a squeezy bottle with a thin nozzle at the end. What I found with using spackle was that I didn't have much control over what was falling out of the nozzle. Um, I had to keep lifting the bottle up so that it didn't slip out because otherwise it would have just continuously fell out of the nozzle. The consistency of the speckle and the paint together was good. It was correct. Uh, it was the right kind of consistency, nice and firm. 
but I just couldn't control the um, the way it came out of the nozzle. It, it just had a life of its own, basically. So I found I had to be very careful that it didn't just all splodge out all in one big blob. <laughs> So not really knowing where to start or what to do, um, I just thought I'd do the easiest thing that comes to mind, which was straight lines. Um, but I tried to kind of make them as if they were branches or twigs, something like that. When I'd done all the lines, I thought, mm, leaves or berries or something like that, or flowers even, but just squidgy marks came out <laughs> so that was the best I could do I've never done cake decorating I don't know anything about it I just went in blind you know just gave it a try and it didn't come out too bad really These dots I painted, I didn't like them, it spoiled it, I thought, so I took them off and painted black over it again. It's good to have a plan beforehand of what you want to do, because if you don't, you waste a lot of time. I wasted a lot of time doing this teapot here. When I finished piping on the twigs, they all looked just a bit too bright to me. Too much contrast between the teapot and the twigs. So I thought I'm going to mute them down a bit just by adding some more black paint over the top and then just taking a wet wipe and just slightly taking off some of the paint, not all of it of course. And obviously I did that when the twig um, piping was dry. But what I'm really annoyed about is that I've lost the film the video of me doing that so I'm sorry I can't show you that uh, it really is annoying when that happens you know you leave the projects for a while and then you go back to them and then you can't find any of the videos that you've done anyway never mind um, I'll just show you the reveal now so here's the reveal Thank you so much for watching guys. Hope my video gave you some inspiration to do something of your own. Um, please like, please subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye.